Jeff, my man. Come on up and teach us. Double hug. Oh boy. Double hug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joel. So before we get on with the formal presentation, just a quick disclaimer. So the information and opinions contained within this presentation are those of me. They're not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent any disease, and definitely have not been evaluated by the FDA. Probably never will. Uh, this information is not intended to render or replace medical advice of any kind, so please consult with a practitioner or a physician of your choosing. So with that, let's get on with the show. Simple living means different things to different people. Pretty obvious statement, especially if we look around the room, and I bet if we ask each and every one of you, we get a different variation of what simple living means to you. Now, for some it means decluttering, for some it means creating more and consuming less, downsizing, minimalizing, more time, more freedom to pursue your passions and your purpose. And while it means all of these things to me and more, my journey towards, uh, towards simple living began over two years ago, before I even knew simple living even existed, and definitely before I even knew minimalism was a word. And it all started with the most basic element of life for most of us, really all of us, food. See, at the time, I was 30 pounds heavier, bloated, congested, tired, fatigued, anxious, foggy brain, and that was just a few of my symptoms. And despite different diets, workout routines, and about a decade of higher education in the health sciences, most of my life have been spent like this. So what did I do? I got back to the basics. I got back to the basics of human physiology, as well as my experience as a person with a body, with a human body. <laughs> and I got back to the basics of the fire that's inside us, the fire that's inside each and every one of us. And I'm not talking about the fire for your, for your purpose, for your, for your passions, although those are very important. The fire that I'm talking about is much more of a physical fire, much more of a real fire. It's the fire of your physiology. It's the fire that determines really our health, our wellness, our longevity, and our ability to fulfill our purpose and our passions in life. And it depends on the materials that we use to build that fire it's going to depend on how quickly that fire gets going, how long it lasts, how hot it burns, and how well it burns. So this starts simply with basically six nutrients. I'm really going to talk about three today. And the six that we start with are all ones you've heard of. Proteins, fats, carbs, water, vitamins, and minerals. And I'm sure we can all agree that we should all drink more water and less of our other beverage of choice and vitamins and minerals specifically are beyond the scope of my talk today, but what I found is that if we get the other three right, the protein, the fats, and carbs, or what I refer to as PFC, they take care of themselves anyways. So this is all about building a better fire within your body. First one, protein. Many people have the wrong impression of protein. Oftentimes people think we need more protein because we need more energy, and in fact, Protein provides very little energy to our body at all. Protein's primary job for us is to build and repair. Build and repair. Build new tissues and repair old and worn out ones. It also makes up the communication within our body, the neurotransmitters, the different chemicals that go around and tell our body what it needs to be doing. And it also gives structure to our body. It makes up many of our cells and tissues and organs within it. So with our fire, Everything's gonna come back to the fire. We can think of protein like the medium-sized branches, logs, sticks. They're going to give our fire structure. They're gonna help it from collapsing in on itself, and they're gonna help fuel the process as we transition from carbs to fat burning. Fat. Fat's a three-letter word, but it's a four-letter word in this country. Over the past 30 to 50 years, we've become a nation of fat phobics. We're afraid of fat. Fat makes us fat. It's not the truth. When it comes to fat, just like when it comes to proteins and carbs, it's not all bad. 
There's different qualities. We need to not only look at the quantity, but more importantly, we need to look at the quality. Some of my favorite fats, grass-fed beef, wild-caught fish, eggs with chickens that roam around, avocados, nuts, seeds, oils like extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil, and that's just to name a few of that very healthy fats. You might also notice that many of those fats also contain healthy proteins. Nature did a great job of packaging what we need together all at once, way before the big food manufacturers tried. So when we think of fat, we can think of fat much like the large logs. Fat is there to give us that extra long burn, especially when we haven't eaten for hours, like when we go to sleep at night. The reason we don't starve and die is because we have fat to live on. Fat also helps to make up much of the structure in our body, cells, tissues, and organs again, and helps us to absorb and use important vitamins like vitamins A, D, E, and K. So as you can see, fat has many roles in our body. No pun intended. <laughs> but that's just a few of them. <laughs> so on to our third ingredient for building a better fire. Carb, carbohydrate, carbs, or what they ultimately become, whether it's a Skittle or a piece of bread or a red pepper, glucose, blood sugar. That's what it all boils down to. It's all sugar in the end. But again, it comes back to what is the quality of that sugar that we're putting into our body. So when I ask people, what do you think of when I say the word carb? Bread, pasta, rice, cookies, cakes, muffins, pies, chips, those are usually the answers. Very rarely does anybody ever say fruits and vegetables. These were the original carbs, way before Wonder Bread. These were the carbs that start off with water, fiber, important vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, everything we need for a healthy, functioning body. So when we think of carbs, we can think of them like the crumpled up newspaper, the twigs, the small sticks. This is what gets our fire started. It's what gets it going and then passes it off to fat. But carbs can also act like lighter fluid or a dousing of gasoline, getting our fire to burn up extra hot and extra high and then die back down quickly. This would be the result of the highly processed and refined standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet. So when it comes to building a better fire, everything comes back to this, PFC, proteins, fats, carbs, and these are just a few of the many examples that we can put together. So just as different woods provide us with different quality of fires in the real world, whether it's a bonfire, a campfire, in your fireplace, different PFCs provide us with different quality of burn within our body. So it's up to us to provide that quality PFC, those great combinations every day, every meal, every time. Now this isn't the only thing that I've discovered over the past couple of years. There's two other acronyms that I want to share with you. The first one is EIO. It stands for eating early, intelligently, and often. Early means eat breakfast, usually within an hour of waking up. Breakfast literally means to break the fast. So when you go to sleep, you're fasting, whether you like it or not. So most of us wake up to low burning embers, coals, or worse yet, a burned out fire. And what do many people do? They throw enough coffee on it, enough caffeine, to make them feel like they're ready for the day, or they sit down to part of this balanced breakfast, skim milk, cereal, and glass of orange juice, sugar. And then they wonder, why am I crashing an hour later? Why am I tired? Why do I need another hit of caffeine and sugar to keep going for the day? So remember, stoke the fire. Intelligently. Intelligently means a lot of things. It means trust your gut. It means listen to your body. It means listen to your own internal intelligence rather than the advertisements and the commercials. Eating intelligently means asking better questions. What is the quality of this food? Where is it coming from? 
who actually benefits from me eating this product? Where are these health claims actually coming from? Where am I grocery shopping? What restaurants do I go to? What's in my cupboards? What's in my fridge? And what do I pack in my lunch <coughs> and for snacks when I leave for the day? So eat intelligently. The opposite of how many people eat, which is mindlessly. Let's eat mindfully. And last, often. <laughs> often means eating more frequent, smaller meals. It means not skipping meals. It means not eating one big gorge session at the end of the day to get you ready for the next day. It doesn't work well. Eating often means breaking out your Hulk Hogan lunchbox and your G.I. Joe thermos. And it means planning ahead for the day so that you don't get hangry. <laughs> hangry is hungry and angry. <laughs> when I get hangry, I stop thinking, I start eating, and I usually don't do it very intelligently. So plan ahead. So just as Old McDonald said, E-I-E-I-O. And that's the farmer Old McDonald, not Ronald McDonald. <laughs> The last acronym that I have to share with you is probably the simplest one of all, but is definitely not the easiest. But it's simple, and it's surf. Simply eat real food. And just so we're all on the same page, real food comes from a plant, ate plants, or lived among the plants, but was not made in a plant. <laughs> Real food usually comes in its own natural packaging. And if it does come in a box, a bag, or a can, there's probably only about five ingredients on it. You can read and understand all of them in English. And sugar and any of its second, third, or fourth cousins, real or fake, <laughs> is not on the list. So simply eat real food. And if you have a hard time remembering that, just remember, WWGGE, what would great grandma eat? Oh. <laughs> and that is actually a picture of my great grandma. She passed away last year at almost 103 years old. So just remember, what would great grandma eat back on the farm? What would she consider real food? So as I said in the beginning, each and every one of us has a fire burning inside of us. And it's up to us to fuel that fire each and every day. And we do this through the raw materials, through the foods that we eat and drink every single meal. So to get back to that, there's really only three, what I think are simple ingredients. PFC, protein, fat, carbs. Put them together, pick your healthiest kinds of each, mash them together, and eat that every day, every meal, every time. EIO. Just remember Old McDonald the farmer, not Ronald McDonald. <laughs> and sir, simply eat real food. What would great grandma eat? We have the choice. We can either pay the farmer now, or we can pay the hospital later. And I guarantee you the hospital is going to be way more expensive and painful. So what does simple living mean to me? Well, it means all those things that I listed off at the very beginning, but when it really comes down to it, simple living to me means building a better fire. Building a better fire inside so that I can fuel the other fires that I have. My purpose, my passions in life. Thank you. <laughs>